Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. Today we are discussing my favorite Patek Philippe complication. Launched at Baselworld 2008 and extensively guided by the aesthetic sensibilities of primary designer Terry Stern, this is the landmark Patek Philippe 5207P-001. The watch is substantial. 41 millimeters in Platinum 950, you can see it's 13.9 millimeters thick by 51.4 millimeters lug to lug with expansive and graceful, almost fluid lug forms, a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. And as you can see, the top Vesselton diamond, brilliant cut between the lugs at six o'clock, as Patek Philippe is wont to do to communicate the noblest of metals on the wrist. Now the timepiece does feature hardware and software to match. Large rectangular scale alligator leather, semi-gloss finish, monotone stitch with a folded edge. You can see it is razor thin. This is a compact watch with a compact factory strap, calfskin on the underside, a brand new Patek factory strap, and everything is symmetrical as there is a black polished and beautifully beveled spade style platinum pin buckle to match the platinum case. Now here's where things grow interesting as the timepiece features evacuated case blanks and you'll note that the strike charger in the repeater slide has also been evacuated with a graceful almost biomorphic form to the fluid relief and then inboard you can see there is hand chiseled surfacing that is hand chiseled or frosted using a burn so not only is this a freehand engraved case but it is engraved and chiseled now the bezel is concave in profile sort of a negative bowl form convex one might say to visually pair the mass of the watch and it's quite effective the timepiece features a large matching platinum maltese cross style crown for winding manual wind watch naturally all of high polish across the lug hoods there's a little bit of a step of the case band to the bezel to further articulate the case flank and add a bit more masculine definition to some of the feminine fluid forms. Now the dial was decidedly prescient. Terry Stern wanted an aperture perpetual calendar, which for various reasons is both less common and more special in Patek Philippe history, dating back to the early 40s. But he also wanted a salmon dial. And back in 2008, he was about a decade ahead of the curve, as these are now all the rage, but the salmon dial and the white metal combination at the time was quite innovative and offbeat. Now, the dial is of the highest quality. You could see the perpetual calendar, which is in apertures, the day, the date, and the month with the leap year phase. It's important to note that this is an instantaneous change perpetual calendar, which in terms of chorology is about as rare as hen's teeth on a rooster. You can test it too. Set everything to the turn, including of the leap year, and then roll it through midnight with high speed film. You will find and I assume you're gonna use a camera phone for this, that it will change all of the indications instantaneously at midnight. Rare is the perpetual calendar that can manage this feat. Now inboard, it is a sunburst. Outboard, you can see there are dimple style polished tracks for the minutes faceted dauphine style white gold hands they're faceted to make them easier to view against the dial base and note the good taste in the use of a polished chaptering for both the constant seconds and moon phase as well as the inner dial outboard you can see individually hand applied and diamond polished faceted white gold indices you have a perpetual calendar with a night day indicator down at approximately 7.30, that lets you know when not to use the pusher adjusters to correct the calendar. When it's blue, no go. Now the timepiece features a moon phase with a 122 year adjustment interval. So whereas the perpetual calendar will need to be reset in the year 2100, one must assume that the moon phase is effectively set it and forget it for the original owner. The timepiece features an extravagant alphabet soup of a movement on the reverse side. Patek Philippe always places its tourbillon on the reverse to protect the lubricants from UV rays, which can degrade the quality of the lubricant on the pinion. Now, taking a quick look, we'll get as close as we can. I mentioned alphabet soup, and technically, this is the RTO 27 PSQI. Let's go over that. R for minute repeater, TO for tourbillon, 27 is the size of the movement, PS is petite second, which the watch certainly is, and then QI you have an instantaneous contiem or calendar. Now, the toughest acts of finishing a fine movement, black polish and interior angles. Everything that is black polished will turn black at all but its one reflective angles. Note, all screw heads, the tourbillon cage, the tourbillon bridge, the cover of the center wheel, and the minute repeater strikers, all black polished. Now let's get a bit closer. Inside the bridge for the tourbillon alone, eight interior angles, that sharp inward cleft where two beveled edges meet. You know you're looking at a genuine article done by hand, 
finished with wood when you see that sharp inward cleft. Now there's a nine one, un, there's a ninth one just underneath the 14 carat third wheel. The third wheel drives the tourbillon ultimately, but what's important to note is that it is 14 karat gold, which is mechanical quality gold, hand finished with a lovely almost octopus-like form to the individual spokes. That component in 14 karat gold by itself takes 9 to 11 hours to finish. Mechanical specifications, quite a few. Five position adjustment, which is the high horology and chronometer standard. It has a handmade Breguet overcoil hairspring. Now, ferrous Breguet overcoil hairsprings are used for the premier Patek timepieces. The mass-produced pieces use silicon hairsprings. It's also a Patek Gyromax style balance, so it's free sprung for greater durability. It beats way at 21,600 vibrations per hour, and the manual wind movement has a 38 to 48 hour power reserve. As you can see, there are richly crested circular Cote de Genève, perfectly aligned across the bridge tops. All of the screw heads are black polished with chamfered slots and circumference, and then you can see there's an engine turning on the base plate. Even components that are not visible to the eye on this movement are entirely hand finished, the ultimate sign of integrity. The watch is capable of running no worse than minus three plus two seconds per day. Now this is a minute repeater. I should mention because of the repeater status, it is water resistant only to moisture and only to dust, no submergence. If you want to set your minute repeater for maximum impact, you want to set your minute repeater to 1259. I'm going to do my best here to set this watch precisely to 1259 because a minute repeater, especially a Patek Philippe minute repeater, is a piece of theater. I should mention that each Patek minute repeater has to pass a personal trial against Terry Stern's ear before it ships out to the client, and this watch is no exception. This is the Patek Philippe 5207P, and this is my favorite Patek Philippe.